Hi, it's Mike Del Scenario, Massachusetts OUI lawyer. In today's video, I want to talk about what happens if you're arrested and charged with OUI and the case is going to be heard in Peabody District Court. Um, as an OUI lawyer, I've handled these cases for years and I've spoken to people uh, countless times to help them understand the process. So first of all, we need to understand the license loss. When you refuse a breath test, you're looking at a six-month suspension on a first offense um, there's not too much, too many ways around that. Other, if you win the case, uh, potentially you can get your license back prior to the six months, but generally it takes close to the six months to get to trial. So if you wanna fight the case, you're gonna unfortunately have to get a ride to work, figure out the driving situation. There is an appeal to the RMV, but that you shouldn't do, basically. The reason you shouldn't do that is because the RMV has been taking out an immediate threat suspension for people who appeal the refusal. So you would actually make your situation worse if you uh, appealed the refusal in all likelihood. Those appeals were very difficult to win. I won about 20 out of 130 maybe, and it was from the same few judges. So um, it's not an appeal you're likely to win and you're more likely to make things worse. So the benefit though, when you refuse to test a breath test is that the government's not gonna have that evidence of uh, objective evidence of what your BAC is. Um, so the case is gonna depend on the field sobriety test, uh, the nine step walk and turn, the one leg stand, things that are very subjective and that we can contest a trial. So you have a good chance of being found not guilty. There's many ways to challenge field sobriety tests. You might've been tired from work. Uh, you could have a knee back problem, some other medical issue that explains problems with balance. So the idea is there's other reasons other than alcohol that could affect your performance. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at the entire case and make the best assessment for you uh, in terms of whether we should fight the case or try to work out a resolution. Now, if you, so if you wanna fight the case, um, you're looking at trying to find, find a way to work while we're fighting the case. Let's say you wanna resolve the case. If you resolve the case, you can possibly get a hardship license, but you'll need a letter from work and um, the RMV will have to approve the hardship. So if there's an accident or some other major factor in the case uh, that the RMV finds that, that takes it out of the ordinary run-of-the-mill OUI that they're used to seeing, maybe they deny the hardship. Um, but if there's no accident and you get a letter from work, I think there's a strong chance you could get a hardship license if you refuse the test. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to deal with the driving uh, while we fight the case and have you found not guilty. Next, if you took a breath test and failed, you only lost your license now for 30 days. You get your full license back after 30 days. It's not a hardship license. So while the case is being fought in court, you'll be able to drive. Um, that's the benefit. The downside though is that now we have this additional evidence we need to get excluded um, in order to win the case. But it happens all the time. There's different ways to challenge breath test evidence. There's different legal issues. So I generally encourage people who took a breath test not to assume that the case can't be won, get all the evidence, look at the case, um, and see if we can get the breath test thrown out. I've gotten many thrown out over the years. I can't say every breath test is gonna get uh, thrown out of evidence, but there are ways to challenge these things um, so that the, the test isn't used in court, and then the case then um, reverts back to being a subjective case based on the office's opinion uh, field sobriety tests and things like that uh, that I think make it difficult to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that someone's under the influence of alcohol. So those are the um, various penalties if you refuse or if you took the breath test. How the court process will work, your first date, court date will be an arraignment. You'll enter a not guilty plea. After that, you'll there'll be pretrial dates. Typically, Peabody will allow us to waive your appearance for the first uh pre-trial so you don't have to appear. Generally, we're just getting evidence and documents and things like that, um, so videos um, to review. So we'll need time to review that. Once we have all the evidence, we'll decide what makes sense for you. Should we take this to trial? Should we fight it? Typically, the difference between a plea and a guilty after trial isn't really that great. A, a prior to trial, you'd get a continuance without a finding. After trial, you'd have to get a guilty, but most judges won't punish people for going to trial on a first OUI offense. So these are cases that are often uh, taken to trial and um, many times uh, they're not guilty verdicts. In other words, I have cases all over Massachusetts, I have a lot of work out of Peabody, but I've had a lot of success fighting these cases because the government's gotta prove more than maybe you were under the influence. It's a, it's a very low standard to arrest somebody, get somebody off the road, but it's a high standard to say 
beyond a reasonable doubt to an abiding conviction of moral certainty, you were under the influence of alcohol and it's a subjective case. So if you have any questions, feel free to call me, text anytime, 781-686-5924. My passion is helping people uh, make the best decisions they can regarding an OUI case. Um, I'm hoping I can help you avoid an OUI conviction, but the ultimate goal is to do whatever is best for you, your family, your work, uh, and to make a good decision that will help you move forward with your life. Um, so feel free, call, text, anytime.